celebrate Black History Month. It only seems fitting that this week we look at a race occurring this weekend at Aqueduct, aim for the last black jockey to win the Kentucky Derby. And a man who, despite suffering the ravages of racism and segregation in his home country of the United States, achieved practical superstar status half a world away for his racing exploits. What many people fail to remember or realize is that in the 1800s and into the early 1900s, many of the top jockeys of the racing world were black. Jimmy Winkfield was no different. Born in 1882, he became a jockey at the age of 16. His riding career did not get off to an exactly stellar start, though, as in his first race, he was involved in an incident in the gate that led to a four-year suspension. He didn't serve those complete four years, though, and in 1900 finished third above Thrive in that year's Kentucky Derby before winning the next two runnings of the Run for the Roses with His Eminence and Alan Adele, respectively. In 1902, he became the last black jockey to win the Kentucky Derby, and there was an odd type of irony in that win as well. In 1902, he became the last black jockey to win the Kentucky Derby, and there was also an odd type of irony in that win as well. Alan Adele was trained by a grandson of the famous statesman Henry Clay. The former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Clay was also a slave owner, and one of the slaves he happened to own was Winkfield's mother. That Peter B. Wynn, a recession began to affect the U.S. and took its toll on the racing world as well. With racetracks closing and people demanding to see white jockeys take the mounts on horses, Winkfield decided it was time to move on. Move on he did, too, a half a world away to Russia of all places. It was here that he was not judged by the color of his skin, but by the amazing skills he had with horses. It was rumored that he was the personal rider for Tsar Nicholas himself at the time, but he debunked that myth when he revealed to a reporter that he never did actually ride for the Tsar, but rather rode and trained for Montachev. Being named champion Russian jockey three times, and even winning the Tsar's Triple Crown there, he was sought after as a first call rider for all of the top racing outfits. The Russian Revolution of 1917 forced Winkfield to move on yet again, first helping getting many horses and a few trainers out of Russia to Poland, and then on to France where he set up another very successful racing stable at the Hippodrome de Maison Lafette. He quickly became just as successful here and rode until he was 48 years old. He even garnered the friendships of such stars as Bing Crosby. Seen here with Wingfield discussing horses at the Grand Prix in Paris. Politics and war would again come knocking on his door, though, and after the Nazis seized his farm during World War II, he was forced to move back to the United States. When there, he spent time working at farms in Aiken, South Carolina, and the Bowie Racetrack in Maryland. Still being subjected to the racism and segregation that was rampant during that time, though, he moved back to Maison Lafette permanently in 1953. He returned to the famed Twin Spires in 1961 to celebrate that derby victor of 60 years prior and to be an honored guest at a reception at the Brown Hotel in Louisville as part of a Sports Illustrated banquet and reception there. Apparently was considered as an honored guest by some though, as the staff would not admit him through the front door because of his skin color, and only was allowed in after the publication convinced the staff he was their guest. Fed up with the treatment after that, he never again returned to the U.S., living out the rest of his days in France until his death in 1974. In 2005, Aqueduct Racetrack in New York renamed the best turn stakes, the Jimmy Winkfield Stakes, in his honor. And while not a real race that starts many on the road to the Derby, this ungraded stakes race at six furlongs can be an important first race of the year for horses looking to make their mark in the sprint ranks. That same year, the United States House of Representatives passed a resolution honoring the life and career of Jimmy Winkfield. A year earlier, he was posthumously inducted into the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame. Very deserving in wards indeed, but to the eyes of many, awards that should have been given much sooner to a man who truly left his indelible mark on the sport of racing all over the globe. This education segment brought to you by Thorofan. Check out thoroughfan.com to learn everything about this amazing sport we call thoroughbred racing and to become a member today. Thoroughfan, giving the fans a voice.